This video is about using the ADALM2000, also known as M2K, to demonstrate a TALO RF mixer and how it can shift signals from one frequency to another. I made an introductory video about the ADALM2000. I'll put a link to it below. So, what exactly is a TALO mixer? It's a kind of radio frequency or RF mixer. RF mixers are devices that accept two inputs and produce an output that is frequency shifted. For example, suppose one input signal is a sine wave with frequency F0, and the other is a sine wave with frequency F1. The output of an ideal RF mixer is a signal that is the sum of two sine waves, one with frequency F0 minus F1, and the other F0 plus F1. Mathematically, an ideal RF mixer is a signal multiplier. It multiplies one signal by another. If you recall your trigonometry, you can see how multiplying two sine waves results in the sum of two new signals, cosines with frequencies F0 minus F1 and F0 plus F1. A cosine is just a phase shifted sine. Frequency shifting is very handy in radio design. For example, suppose you want to design a simple radio receiver that detects whether or not a carrier sine wave with frequency 2.51 MHz is present or not. Your receiver could have a 2.5 MHz local oscillator and mix it with the signal from the antenna. F0 minus F1 would then be 10 kHz. It's much easier to process a 10 kHz signal than it is to process a 2.51 MHz signal. Note that real-world RF mixers are not ideal. They introduce additional frequencies beyond F0 minus F1 and F0 plus F1. So real-world systems have to use filters to get rid of those unwanted additional frequencies. So how can an analog circuit do multiplication? That sounds really hard. Amazingly, diodes can do it. Read the Frequency Mixer article on Wikipedia to learn how that works. Another idea is to make one of the input signals, say F1, a square wave going between 0 and 1. Now multiplication consists of switching F0 on and off at rate F1. This works because F1's largest harmonic is a sine wave with frequency F1, and we can filter out the other harmonic products. This is called a switching mixer. Finally, a Taylor mixer, invented by Dan Taylor, is a quadrature switching mixer. I'll put a link to Dan's paper below. A quadrature mixer is just two mixers. F0 is fed into both, F1 is fed into the first, and F1 phase shifted by 90 degrees is fed into the other. I'll demonstrate one reason why quadrature mixers are useful later. The output of the first mixer is called I for in phase. The output of the second mixer is called Q for quadrature, I guess. Two signals are said to be in quadrature if one is 90 degree phase shifted from the other. I'll put a link to a video from W2AEW on this subject below. Low pass filters are used to get rid of extra unwanted harmonic products and also to focus on the F0 minus F1 result. The switching in Taylor mixers is done using a 1 to 4 analog multiplexer chip. I'm using an SN74LV4052A that I bought from Mauser.com for 75 cents. This may not be the best part for building radios, but it's cheap, available in a breadboard-friendly dip package, and is good enough for a demonstration. Okay, now what exactly is an analog multiplexer? It's a kind of switch. The 74452 contains two 1 to 4 multiplexers. We will use only one of them. Input signals B and A control which Y pin the common pin is connected to. An analog signal can flow between the common pin and the currently selected Y pin. For example, if B and A are driven with 0 and 1, low and high, then the 1 common pin and the 1 Y1 pin are connected to form a path on which an analog signal can flow. The table shows the pattern. If B and A are both 0, the connection is from 1 common to Y0, and so on. For the 74452, the analog signal values must be positive but less than VCC. Also, not much current flow is allowed. Read the datasheet for details. To build our TALO mixer, we set the inhibit pin to low to enable chip operation. And we feed the F0 signal to the one common pin via a resistor. The F1 in phase signal drives the A input, and the F1 90 degree phase shifted signal drives the B input. Notice that this means F0 will be connected in turn to 1Y0, 1Y2, 1Y3, and 1Y1 in a sequential cyclic pattern. 
This is the switching in a switching RF mixer. We actually need only one Y0 as the I output and one Y2 as the Q output, but there is a use for the other two as we will see later. To demonstrate the Talo mixer, all we need is an AD-ALM2000, a 1 to 4 multiplexer, four capacitors, and a resistor. The capacitors act with resistance to form a low-pass filter. After filtering, we have the F0 minus F1 signal. The capacitance value depends on frequencies and system resistances. See Dan Taylor's paper for a short discussion of this. For a demonstration, one can experiment with different capacitor values. I am using 3.3 nanofarad capacitors initially. The ADALM2000 connections are as follows. First, we're going to connect V plus to the VCC pin of the, of the multiplexer chip. We'll drive it with 5 volts using the ADALM2000 power supply. Then we're going to connect the W1 signal generator pin of the ADALM2000 via a resistor to 1COM. This is the F0 signal, which will be produced by the ADALM2000 signal generator. And we're going to use the ADALM pattern generator uh, to drive A and B, the square waves uh, F1 and F1 shifted. And so we're, we connect uh, ADALM2000 digital pin D0 to A and digital pin D1 to B. The outputs are the I and Q signals, and we're going to view them using the ADALM2000 oscilloscope. So we need to connect uh, ADM ALM2000 analog inputs. 1 plus will connect to 1Y0 for the I, and 2 plus will connect to 1Y2 for the Q signal. Finally, we need to connect 1 minus and 2 minus and a ground to ground. Here's the demonstration built on a breadboard. Now let's test it. The ADALM2000 Scopy application is running. Let's check some settings. First, the power supply is set to produce 5 volts to power the multiplexer chip. And the pattern generator, we're going to use this to produce F1. So D0 pin is producing F, F1 um, unshifted. So the frequency is 2.5 megahertz, no phase shift and a 50% duty cycle. And signal D1 is going to be the uh, shifted F1. So 2.5 megahertz, but this time with a 90 degree phase shift and a 50% duty cycle, the same as before. So remember the frequency 2.5 megahertz. F0 is going to come from the Scopy uh, signal generator and um, it's producing a sine wave at a frequency of 2.501 megahertz. So the difference between that and the F1 signal is one kilohertz. So that's the uh, frequency we should expect to see um, when we look at the signal um, output, the uh, I and Q output in the oscilloscope. So let's turn on the power supply, turn on the pattern generator, turn on the signal generator, go to the oscilloscope, run it, and um, let's see, the orange signal is, is I, and the purple signal is Q. Let's reset our statistics, and we're seeing a frequency for both of one kilohertz, which is exactly what we expect. Now, let's try changing the frequency of F0. So we'll go from 2.501 to 2.502, so now we should have a two kilohertz difference. Go back to the oscilloscope, reset statistics, and we see 2 kilohertz, just as we expect. Let's try going a little higher. Let's go to 10 kilohertz. And 10, 10 kilohertz difference. So again, reset statistics, and we see 10 kilohertz. The Talo mixer is working exactly as we expect. But now, let's try a still higher frequency, but, but notice the amplitude of the INQ signals. Just keep that in mind visually. And we'll go back to the signal generator and try something quite a bit higher, like 50 kilohertz. And we go to the oscilloscope, and now we see, well, let's reset the statistics, and we see it's still mostly working, uh, 50, 50 kilohertz signal on, on Q. Um, and let's see, reset statistics again. Okay, now we've got them both, 50 kilohertz, so it's still working. But notice that the amplitude is greatly reduced, and that's due to the low-pass filter. It's kicking in. It's a pretty aggressive low-pass filter. So if you wanted more effective bandwidth, you'd have to try lowering the value of the capacitors. Now, let's go back to, uh, say, 2 kilohertz, because that was easy to see. Um, oscilloscope, 
reset. And uh, now notice that the uh, Q signal, the purple, is to the left of the I signal, the orange. And uh, let's go back to the signal generator. And instead of having the uh, F0 be 2 kilohertz higher than F1, let's make it 2 kilohertz lower and see what happens. So 2.498, still a 2 kilohertz difference. If we go back to the oscilloscope, reset the statistics, and sure enough, we see 2 kilohertz on both still. But now notice that the uh, I signal, the orange, is to the left of the Q. The phase relationship has been reversed. And this is the, or at least one of the key advantages of a quadrature mixer in that it uses this extra phase information to allow you to distinguish between uh, F0 minus F1 being say two kilohertz versus minus two kilohertz. It can tell the difference, a non-quadrature mixer can't. So that's a big advantage of quadrature mixers. Now let's try something. We'll uh, use the time base to zoom in a bit here. And I'm going to try gently removing the filter capacitor for the Q signal. So now it's gone and we see a lot more noise. And so let's try zooming in on that quite a lot more. And it gets hard to see, so we'll do a signal single trigger. And now let's use the cursors, which happen to be on, to try to get an approximate measure of that signal that we're seeing here. And uh, so the time between those negative peaks is about 2.5 megahertz. So that's the uh, F0 signal kind of coming, coming through because it's no longer being filtered as well. So about 2.5 um, megahertz. Now let's run again and go, go back out, go back out. And we'll gently put the capacitor back and the noise disappears. Remember how we're not using MUX outputs 1Y1 and 1Y3, uh, but I said that those outputs have a use. Let's, let's explore that. In particular, let's have a look at, at 1, 1Y1 and compare it to the current Q signal. Now, um, the ADALM2000 is only a two-channel oscilloscope, so I can't show three signals at the same time. But what I can do is I can go to the channel two uh, menu here and take a snapshot of Q. And then I have to adjust that to have the same um, scale as channel two. So it's like it's 300 millivolts. And now this should line up perfectly with the Q channel. Okay, so now, I can take the input uh, two plus and remove it from from one y two and put it on to one y one and and there that's done. So now what do we observe? Um, we see that those two signals are one hundred and eighty degrees out of phase. So if we could take one of the signals and subtract it from the other, we'd end up with a resulting signal that is the same except it has larger amplitude. It would be making more use of the incoming signal to F0. So that's a good thing to do. So let, let's try that. So first we'll, we'll get rid of this uh, reference signal. And then I'm going to put um, the two plus input back to um, 1Y2. And, and just in anticipation of what we're going to do, Let's adjust the volts per division so we can see better. And I think I'll do that for channel one as well, setting them both to one volt per division. Right. And so now the one benefit we have with the ADALM2000 is that its, its analog inputs are differential. So what I could do is to take the um, two minus signal and disconnect it from ground and connect it to the one Y one. And now we see that larger amplitude, just, just like I predicted. And um, so those two, those two signals, one, one, um, one Y one and one Y two, if, if one is subtracted from the other, that gives you Q with greater amplitude. So one thing you could do is to take those two signals and feed them into a differential amplifier to make use of that. And that's what radios do. I'll show a block diagram of that in a minute. 
But next, let's let's go ahead and do the same thing with the I signal. So I'm going to remove one minus from ground and attach it to the signal that's 180 degrees out of phase with it, which is 1y3. And so now I've made both um, I and Q to have higher amplitudes and make better use of the energy from, from the signal uh, F, F0. You can use a TALO detector like this to build a simple software-defined radio front end and listen to radio stations. Basically, you connect an antenna, ideally via some sort of filter, as the F0 input. Use the ADALM2000's pattern generator like we did for F1 and F1 shifted. The F1 frequency sets the center frequency of the region you want to receive. Then, use differential amplifiers built from op amps across the Y pins to amplify and also feed the inputs of a PC sound card. Software-defined radio software runs on the PC. I may try this with my demo someday, but I probably won't make a video because Dr. Volt already made a video like this, but he used an ESP32 instead of the ADALM2000. I'll put a link to his video below. I'll also include a link to NA5Y's channel. He presents more sophisticated radio designs. In particular, the type and the quality of the filters matters to the success of the radio. I hope you found this video interesting. I think I'll end it here. Uh, thanks for watching.